So in this tutorial, I'm going to use the morph tool to create a kind of tween or averaged curve between two curves that I draw in Max. So I'm going to start by going to the lines menu, and I'm just going to create, um, I'll just go to the top menu for this, and I'll just create um, kind of outline shape. And then I'm going to morph between that shape and this kind of doorway shape. Um, and then the nice thing about the morph, so I'm going to create an average curve sort of between these two curves. So the nice thing about the morph is you can actually, if I go back to this curve, you know, and I move some of these vertices uh, in three dimensions, it can actually morph uh, kind of three-dimensionally between this form and this more uh, flat shape. So um, the first thing you need to do is make sure that each uh, shape has the same number of vertices. So if I select all these vertices and I go to the vertex of object number, you can see that over here on display that there are eight vertices selected. So if I go to this line, um, you'll notice I only have four vertices. So I need to introduce four more vertices into this shape. So maybe I'll do, um, there's a few ways you could do this. At the vertex of object level you can hit refine and just sort of uh, turn off your snaps and then add vertices at any points along these lines and maybe you kind of want to kind of predict where these are going to go. So for this point maybe I'll add a point there. Maybe that one's okay. Maybe for this one I'll have another one there and then this one will go there. I'll put one up here for this point and then maybe one more. So um, you can do that or you could just select segments of object level, select these segments and divide until you have the same number of vertices between any of the shapes that you want to morph between. Okay, so once you have that, you can then begin the morph. So um, you can select either line. I'll select this first line. You want to make sure your timeline's at zero and then uh, go to the create tab. Um, geometry, compound objects from the drop down, um, morph, and then you want to bring the timeline all the way to the end and then hit pick target and select the second object. So if you move the timeline you'll see it'll morph between those two shapes along the timeline. So if you want to extract any shape um, between the first shape and the last shape all you have to do is go to that whatever point in the timeline you want to extract the shape from go to the modify tab of the morph object add an edit spline modifier and this will give you access to that spline you can then open up that spline select that spline and then over here on the right detach a copy of the spline and that will create a copy at that particular time frame so if you keep going along I could take another one out of here uh, maybe I'll take this one detach that one okay um, and then we have our first one, so I'll go ahead and detach the first one and copy the first one as well. Okay, and then once you've done that, you can sort of hide that shape. Um, and then I'll go to the top view here, and you'll notice, unfortunately, it kind of misplaces where the pivot is, so you know it's no longer aligning. It's always using the first object's pivot and not the second one. Um, so what you might have to do is just kind of manually go in here and move these. What I'll do is turn on my snaps, right-click on my snaps, go to Options, Turn on, make sure my enable axis constraints is turned on. And then I can kind of move this a little bit in the Y and then drag this endpoint and make sure it snaps. Oops. Make sure it snaps so it's in line with that endpoint. And I can do that on, on all of these. You know, so um, I can make sure that, you know, whoops, that um, that ground is flat. So then I, if I go back to perspective view, you can see I have those three dimensionally morph shapes. You know, at this point, if you want, you can attach them. We're going to make a cross section. You just want to make sure you attach them in order. And then once you've attached them, you can start to vary some of these as well. So if you want to add a little variation into that surface, for example, I can right click and smooth those two points, for example. Uh, maybe I'll smooth these. Yeah, you know, just to add a little variation within that tween surface. Um, the next thing I can do is add a cross-section modifier. You want to make sure all your first points are on the same side of this uh, line network. And so if they're not, you have to go to Vertex, select the point that's not, and hit Make First. But these are all good. Um, we then can add the cross-section modifier, which will make the surface, and then the surface modifier. So now we have a tween surface between those two. And on the cross-section modifier, 
If you hit smooth, you can actually create kind of smooth geometries between those two. Um, one thing you might do is add an edit poly modifier. And, you know, if you get these kind of weird wrinkles here, it might be helpful to reduce the surface. And then on the edit poly, you can actually add a turbo smooth. And that'll kind of smooth it out in a slightly different way. You'll notice it'll also smooth out that door, though. So um, one thing you might want to do, maybe uh, delete the turbo smooth, add a mesh smooth. And then you could choose a different subdivision method, like maybe classic. You know, in classic, um, it won't uh, deform that inner form, but maybe this doesn't look great. So, you know, you might have to go back into this original line. I always like to turn on the in toggle here, and then you can start to adjust that one. I can, you know, I could start to make that a corner point and you know, move it out a little bit. So those are different ways of creating surfaces um, using kind of tween curves between a really uh, kind of complex organic shape and a more rectilinear inner shape.